Hi, my name is Lorraine Watry and welcome to my studio. I am a watercolor artist and I've worked with watercolor for 26 years now and I thought I would start a new series of videos where I go over different tips, tricks and techniques for working with watercolor and hopefully these short videos will help you in your journey and if you have a question or a technique that you would like to see please comment below and I will try to accommodate that in a future video. Hi, today's tip and trick video for watercolor is from a viewer and they asked what colors are standards that I paint with and do I have other palettes? So I thought I would just uh, kind of go through the palettes that I have and talk about them a little bit and some of the uh, colors that I use the most. So as you can see, I have a variety of palettes laid out here and the main palette that has the lid off right now is the one that I paint with in my studio all the time. And uh, I every now and then will switch out uh, some paint, but these are the colors that I tend to work with for the majority of the paintings that I do. So I do have some favorites and uh, as far as the pigments that are on my palette. And then the other paints that are on there are things that I do like, uh, but I don't necessarily use them in every painting. So if I had to choose just uh, certain colors that I would use if I was limited to the uh, pigments that I could use, then they, I have a smaller palette and I'll talk about the palette in a little bit, but these are the colors that I would go with. So, Going from the yellows around to the brown, uh, this yellow is Quinn Gold. This is Oriolan, which actually this is my older Oriolan, uh, and I've now taken that off of this palette, and I'm using Oriolan Hue, so I would have to switch that one out. This is one that I would use when I go plein air painting, and when you're limited to the amount of colors uh, that you want to carry with you, then uh, this is a good palette for that. This is New Gamboge Yellow. This is uh, Transparent Parole Orange. This is uh, Parole Scarlet. And uh, Quinn Rose, I believe. Uh, this is Permanent Alizarin Crimson. And then Quinn Magenta. Uh, Ultramarine Blue. Cobalt. And this is manganese, but uh, manganese or cerulean would be good here because they're both lighter turquoisey colors. Cerulean would be a little more muted. This is thalo blue. And then sap green, green appetite genuine, burnt umber, and burnt sienna. So if I was limited uh, to, uh, let's see, this is one, two, three, four, eight, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 colors, those are the colors that I would choose. And if I was limited even more, then I will show you that in just a minute. I would choose a palette of six colors plus a brown. And so I'll show you that in a little bit. So I'm going to talk about the palettes just a little bit and I'll move these guys out of the way for now. So this is a Stephen Quiller palette and I uh, have used this for probably close to 26 years now. Not this particular palette, but this uh, style and this from this brand. And I really like the big open center area because then I can pull my colors from the sides. I could make a, a big area of a huge amount of color if I want or just little pools of color. And uh, this particular palette has quite a few op uh, wells uh, to put your paint in. Now, I have talked about this in another video. Basically, I use some hot glue to make these uh, corner wells a little smaller. And you can see on the red one, this is how they come as a bigger opening. And then using the hot glue, I can make it a little smaller and give myself even um, a few more spaces to put some paint. So uh, this one is plastic. They also come in porcelain, and I don't have the porcelain one. Um, the porcelain one, I believe the paint um, 
stays where you place it on the palette a little better. In a lot of the plastic palettes, you'll find that when you bring paint uh, into uh, the center area, sometimes it will beat up or uh, it seems to not come off your brush as well. And um, the porcelain one, I from what I've heard from others, that the paint kind of stays where you place it. The one drawback I find with the porcelain one is that uh, it doesn't have as many wells as this one, even um, something about it. There were fewer numbers of wells that were available, and then just that it's uh, heavier than a plastic palette. Now, these guys do crack over time. So over time, I will have corners come off or the there'll be a crack on the side. And a lot of the time, I'll just go ahead and tape it up and eventually I will get a new one. So this is also, and you can see the name here, Quiller Palette. So the first palette I showed you comes with a lid, just like this one. And uh, this one is a palette that I keep off to the side for when I want some uh, neutral colors and the Daniel Smith Primatech series, which is what is on here. And these pigments are very granular. And the Primatech series is one if you're interested in uh, earth tones and there are some greens and blues and some reds and uh, burnt siennas and things and even purple in the line. Uh, these are Primatech pigments are earth uh, pigments. So either uh, a stone or a crystal or something like that. So uh, they are natural pigments and uh, Daniel Smith has created uh, two paints from them and they are uh, based on paints that were made uh, centuries ago when people first started using paint. And they are very granular. So you can see here and maybe in the tiger's eye. So there's lots of little specks uh, that happen with this paint. And uh, I really like that technique or texture. And so if it's something that you're interested in, I would check these out. And I do have on, pull this one back over for a second. I do have on my main palette, a few of these colors. So I have the Green Appetite Genuine uh, right here. And then I have the Serpentine Genuine next to it. And then I have put uh, Tiger's Eye, which is this one, I believe, because I think there's two Tiger's Eye. There's a, a Burnt Tiger's Eye as well. Yeah. So this is the Burnt Tiger's Eye. And then this is the one I have on my palette. I like that tan color and I've used this for a variety of things now. And then the last one that I have on my palette that's from the Primatech series uh, that's on this palette is the Sodalite Genuine and that's this uh, kind of granulating blue-gray and uh, I really like that one. And it can it can look black depending on how dark you put it on your painting. So I'll slide that one over and then as you can see in here uh, they, they look very dark on the palette and, uh, they're not all black. It just, uh, kind of depends on how, um, uh, you bring them out and how you use them. But, um, I just decided to dedicate a palette to them so that when I want a Primatech or, uh, granular color, I, I have it out and ready to use. I don't know exactly what that is, but I haven't had this palette open in a while and my paints will dry in between using them. Some of the Primatech series is a little harder to re-wet uh, just because of the nature of the paint and uh, what is in the paint. They take a little longer to pull the pigment out on some of them. So I would just be aware of that and I'll get this out of the way. And on my other palette video, I do talk about, and that's part of this uh, watercolor tips and tricks technique series. I do talk about putting labels on the sides of your palette uh, so you can know what is in your wells and uh, what some of the characteristics are of those pigments. So you can look on my site and just search for palettes and you should be able to find that information. So I already talked about this one. This is a Gorilla palette. And as you can see with the name on the front, the lid is really um, a good size for mixing paint. And then there is a small well 
on the, the middle of it. This uh, plastic palette is a very heavy, thick plastic, and uh, it works really well to carry in a small bag, and I have not had an issue with uh, it cracking or anything. And then as you can see on this one, I am a, a paint hog and I wanted some more wells. So I used the hot glue to go ahead and divide this bigger corner well just uh, one more time for each of those. And um, it's not a lot of paint, but when you're out plein air painting, I don't tend to do really big paintings. And so it it is plenty. And then these are all just the same pigments that would be on my main palette. Uh, most of them are Daniel Smith. I believe the sap green may be uh, Holbein. And uh, I just squeeze it out of the tube, let it dry, and then I can close it up and, and take it with me. Normally, um, I would probably not leave that in there, but uh, it was probably a quick trip somewhere and I didn't clean it. So this is a Mielo. It's M-I-J-E-L-L-O palette. And they come in a variety of sizes. So this is the, I believe it has 32 wells. Oh, and I had it in my bag. Whoops. Had it in my bag um, for plein air painting. And you can see the paint has dried. That's the one issue I find with uh, this palette is that once the paint dries, because these are really slick, the pigments like to move around in uh, the wells or in the middle of the palette. So I'm just trying to reorganize this right quick. And you go down here. Okay, so um, this palette comes with a plastic uh, liner that you can take out and use. So you have the lid you could mix in, you have this you can mix in, and then uh, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So it has 33 wells. And uh, in order to try to keep the paint where I've put it, or if it's still slightly damp after I've gone to paint somewhere, this is another of my plein air palettes. Um, I have used it every now and then in a classroom situation, but I tend to like my bigger palette uh, for for teaching, or um, even if I have go if I'm going to a location to paint um, to teach a class. So I uh, use this mostly for plein air, and it has a few different uh, pigments in it compared to my main palette. Uh, those would be things like uh, mineral violet. I have moon glow in here. Um, I have cobalt uh, turquoise. And let's see. I think all those are similar. I'm not sure if I have something different there. This purple is the... Actually, I can't tell. Let's see if I have it. This is a uh, press and seal, and uh, in order to try to keep the palette from moving while it's either in my bag or if it's still damp, then I just took a piece of press and seal and lay, lay it across there. And as you can see, it didn't quite hold everything, um, partly because it had probably loosened up in uh, the bag. And I can't remember if I have... No. Oh, I think I know where it is. It's on the back of here. I showed it when I first opened it. So what I did was I just took a picture of uh, the paint in here because there are a few places that you can write on this palette, but they're very small. And if it gets pigment on here, then it's hard to see. So I took a picture, printed it off, and then just uh, taped it to the bottom of the palette. And so that uh, color up here is cobalt violet deep. And I think that's the only... So this one and these three are not, oh, and lunar blue. I don't have lunar blue on my main palette. Um, and I think that's it. Yeah. So um, I'll leave that as a, you can pause the camera so that you can, or the video so that you can see what is on this palette. And uh, I list them if they're not uh, Daniel Smith. So everything has got a DS is Daniel Smith and then the H is for Holbein. So anything with an H would be Holbein. And those are just the two brands that I have on this palette. All right. And this is a plastic one as well. It does uh, hold up well. It's a decent size. It is, 
Uh, this one is about six by a little over 12 inches. So probably about 12 and a half or so. And um, I like the amount of pigments that I can hold in there. So if I'm going plein air painting somewhere that I'm going to be for a while or that I have a bigger uh, bag that I can carry, then this is a, um, a good one because I like the amount of space and pigments that I can carry. And then the other two palettes that I have here, this one is a, an ex basically it's a little cheaper plastic, uh, small palette that you can add pigments to if you're trying a color out, or if I believe this might be something that you can insert into the Cheap Joe's palette. Um, so I don't have that palette, but I saw these and I thought, um, this would be a good place for me to uh, put some color if I wanted to try a paint, but I wasn't sure if I wanted it on my palette or maybe I just wanted it for a painting. Um, so there's a variety of colors in here. Uh, I have bismuth, vanadate yellow, the cobalt teal, uh, phthalo blue turquoise, uh, let's see, nickel, uh, I think that's, yeah, nickel titanate yellow, undersea green, sepia, moon glow. Uh, I'm not sure what that one is. Oh, that might be actually a paint that's fallen out of here. And this is Aussie red gold. And this is one of the Daniel Smith pigments. Uh, Daniel Smith blue turquoise. This is the Mayan blue genuine. So when it says genuine after it, that means that it's uh, a... Um, Primatec pigment. This is Quin Purple, Perlene Green, uh, Ultramarine Light, uh, Holbein brand, and the Lunar Black was in here, but I don't, I don't think it's in there. Um, not enough any, anyway, anymore. So those were just things that, uh, like I said, that I either wanted to test out or that I was going to use for a painting, but I didn't necessarily want to put in my main palette. And you can go crazy with pigments. You could, you could get all kinds of brands and you can get all kinds of colors, but at some point it is a really good idea to just go down to your main um, colors and work with those so that you know what they do and see how they do mixes and really concentrate on kind of staying with a palette of colors for a while. And in most situations, if a teacher suggests, oh, I would like you to have this color, this color, and this color, it may be because they have certain mixes that they want you to make from those and that they know those um, pigments will make that mix because different brands will not always make the same mix, even if it's the same, considered the same color. So uh, I would just be aware that at some point uh, you might... Uh, if a teacher suggests, maybe it's not a, you have to have, but maybe they suggest those colors that you find pigments uh, that are similar enough that you can get a, a color that you like and not necessarily have to buy new colors all the time. Uh, so on this palette, these, this is also a spare palette. This is one, this palette is one that I suggest if uh, you're first starting out with watercolor and you want to get a palette, this was um, a good uh, palette that I found that is a not too expensive price. And I do list it on my supply list. I will put the name on the video so that you can look it up if you're interested. It's, I, I think it's under maybe eight to $10. It's less than that, I believe. Um, and it would be at an online store. So you can see it has a lid. It has some decent size mixing areas. If you were going to paint plein air, then it would have a way that you can put your thumb through and hold it, or you can just hold it on the side. Um, it works okay. And uh, if you're in a classroom situation and you want just a small palette to bring with you, it has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 wells. And you could, if you wanted to use some hot glue across there to divide that once more. Um, and then also you could divide uh, in here and use this as some wells for color, or you could put a sponge here uh, to clean your brush on. If you're out somewhere painting, you could put a little water in here and then um, use these areas for mixing. And the reason that I have this palette is uh, a couple. 
where uh, I am doing a painting of some flamingos and I wanted to test some orange um, mixes and orange colors to use for some of the oranges and corals and things that are in the painting. So I decided to get out some of my oranges and some of these, let me see if I did, I think I, only one that may not be on my palette is the parole orange, but I did put my, the permanent orange and the perinone orange on my um, palette that I use all the time. So this was, the original purpose was to have these pigments out to test them. And I will actually be doing a video where I go over orange mixes and I will be using uh, some of this to show you some of those mixes. And then I uh, was uh, sent the line of the Daniel Smith grays. And uh, this has been a while now, a couple years, I think. And I decided I wanted to put them in a palette to test them out. And so uh, I have a variety of grays and I'll tell you those names in just a second. And then um, this is Hands of Medium. This is Sepia. I do not use Sepia very much. I know some artists that really like Sepia. Uh, for different mixes and things, but um, I have it. I just haven't used it very much. Okay, so the colors that are on here, I'll go with the oranges first. This is permanent orange. This is parole orange. Perinone is P-E-R-I-N-O-N-E. -E. This is quin coral, quin red, and quin rose, and I used those with the oranges in some mixes, and I used some yellows and things, so that will be on the other video. Uh, and then in the grays, uh, I have Jane's gray, and these were all a new line of grays that Daniel Smith put out. And I have uh, Alvaro's uh, Caliente, Alvaro Fr Alvaro's Fresco, uh, Jane, uh, Joseph Zabukovic, Warm, uh, Joseph's uh, Cool, and Joseph's Neutral. And then in the grays was uh, Titanium, Gray Titanium. And uh, so I did uh, some paintings with those. I did uh, some studies and things with the grays. And on a recent video I did, I went over uh, what these grays look like. So if you look up the um, gray mixes or tube gray video, it would have those in there. So I will close this up and I have some looks like cobalt teal maybe sitting up here. That's the other thing that I will do every now and then if, if I have a spare palette and I just need a place to put some paint either to test it or maybe to use in a painting for a little bit, then I will get out a little bit of color and um, use it that way. Uh, this The one thing about this palette is it does not uh, close very well. So if you are going from place to place, I would say maybe a rubber band or something to um, hold it tight would be a good idea so that it's um, not opening on you and spilling your paint out. Okay, so I'm going to get to my main palette here. So now that I've got uh, my palette camera on and I have pulled out a piece of paper and I'm zoomed in a little bit, I will just show you six colors that I would uh, have if I couldn't have any other paint with me. And those six colors would be a split primary palette. And I will just write that up here. And I do have a video on this, so I'm not going to actually create the mixes with it or any of that, but I'll just show you the pigments that I would choose to use. And a split primary palette is one that you have a warm and a cool of your three primaries, and then I also would want to have a brown. Now you can make basically a brown from your split primaries, but I like some of the variety that I can get um, by adding a brown in the mix. So I'm going to start with, I'll just go over here. I probably should have started with my yellows, but I'll go ahead and start with the blue since I went up there first. And it would be really hard for me not to uh, use only ultramarine and not cobalt because I use cobalt and ultramarine in almost every painting I do for mixes or by themselves. Um, so the two blues would be ultramarine blue 
and Thalo. And Thalo is one of those that I do not use that often. But when I want a black or when I want a turquoisey color that is darker, I would I would choose Thalo over some of the lighter turquoise colors like cerulean or um, manganese because those pigments can't go dark enough. So I am thinking about both being able to go with a darker value and also uh, with a color that uh, would go turquoise. So that's why, and this would be a thalo blue green shade, not the red shade. And because that leans toward um, green, so there's a reason for that in the split primary palette. Uh, so then my yellows, I would probably go with my hands of light. And the reason I say probably is because I also like aureole and hue. Actually, I think I may have a little bit. Yeah, <laughs> it's not going to look yellow. It's going to look green. That's the problem with not getting the yellows out first. And I tend to just head toward the blues because blues are one of my favorite colors. Green being my first. Let's see if I can get out some of this with limited amount of blue in there. It's better. Maybe not perfect. So I was saying I might, uh, instead of the hands of light, I might uh, go with the Oriole and yellow. I'm going to see if I can clean this out a little bit. That's better. Let's see if I can get a cleaner section just to see it's a little yellower, not quite as green in the mix. And then I'm going to get some new gamboge because that is a warm yellow. So it is leaning toward orange. And then my reds would be the other primary color. And I would go with my Parole Scarlet. And I have Parole Scarlet on my palette rather than uh, the uh, Cadmium Red. And now most pigments are making Cad Red Hue, which means it has more than one pigment in it. And I decided I didn't want to work with Cadmium Colors. And that was before they uh, decided that it was really too dangerous for people to be mining Cadmium and... and uh, also to be uh, working with it. So now most companies are not offering cadmium as its original form anymore. It's a hue, which means it's more than one pigment to make up a color that is similar to what the original color would have been. Okay, so this is quinacridone rose and it is a cool red. Now, in my palette, uh, some people might go with alizarin crimson because alizarin is a red that leans toward uh, purple, but it is a more neutral color. So for my palette, I want to have as vibrant colors as I can get to, to start, and then I can neutralize them a little bit. And so the last color would be the burnt sienna. And burnt sienna or burnt umber. And I tend to use burnt sienna more than I do burnt umber, but burnt umber would work as well. And so the burnt sienna on here is a way that I can, I could use this to neutralize uh, one of these colors, mean, meaning make it, make it less vibrant. Or I can um, make a mix with it to make a dark. So there's a variety of things that I might want that for. And so if you're interested in the split primary palette, then uh, you can look that video up in my list of watercolor tips and techniques. I thought I would just point out some colors and list some things that I do with them. So with uh, cobalt and uh, cerulean or maybe cobalt and manganese, I uh, like to use that mix uh, to do skies. 
And uh, sometimes I will have the cobalt at the top of the sky and then use uh, one of the turquoise, my lighter turquoise colors for um, kind of the middle to bottom of the sky. And I will sometimes use uh, ultramarine in a sky, and that's usually when it's a, a deeper, um, maybe toward evening sky, or it's maybe stormy. And when I'm speaking of skies, I also will use either ultramarine or cobalt with my uh, burnt sienna, and that gives me a, a really nice gray, and that uh, can be uh, leaning toward uh, blue or it can lead toward lean toward a browner gray. And I like that for skies as well. And let's see, I use um, a lot of my blues, mostly the cobalt and ultramarine. This is ultramarine deep. I will use these guys uh, with my yellows to uh, create greens. And I feel like that uh, combination of uh, the these blues with some yellows will make uh, nice greens for landscapes. I do have the these greens on my palette and majority of them, well, these four lean toward um, a, a warmer green or a kind of a olivey green, a little bit in uh, green appetite and serpentine. Uh, green gold is the only one that I don't use that often, but when I want a really vibrant green, um, and it's kind of a lime green. It is really uh, intense and nice for that. And uh, yellows wise, I have hands of light on my palette rather than lemon because lemon was still a little opaque for me. And so the hands of light is not, it is transparent. And then I have uh, hands of medium, but I haven't really done a whole lot with it yet. I may, um, keep it on there for a little while and, and try some mixes with it. Um, and I don't have a lot of pigment in there because it was one of those that I was still trying to figure out if I would want on my palette. Um, Oriole and Hue, I used to use a lot with mixes for greens and it still works well for greens, but this uh, is a little brighter than the Oriole and that I used to have on my palette. And so, um, I find that I don't always uh, use it as much as I used to use the uh, regular Oriolan. And New, Gambo New Gamboge, I use a lot. I use it with green mixes. I uh, like it to, um, it is a warm yellow that I will mix with reds to make an orange. And uh, that's a really nice mix. Um, I will sometimes also use my yellows with uh, any of these greens to change uh, the color of the green, or I might use my blues with the greens. I don't tend to use the turquoise blues as much as I use the cobalts and the ultramarines. Uh, let's see, I have a variety of browns back here, and these are on the oranger side of browns. It's the uh, burnt sienna. This is Italian burnt sienna, and I used to uh, use this a little more. I haven't used it a lot lately. It is slightly less um, granular than regular burnt sienna, and it is, there was something about the mix. I think it's a little cooler, and um, yeah, I just, I think it made a smoother mix than maybe the regular burnt sienna. Um, and so I have it on there still. At some point, I may decide to take that off. This is uh, Quinn, I always forget. Uh, it's Quinn Sienna. And Quinn Sienna is a very vibrant, rusty brown. It's a really nice uh, color to uh, use by itself, but it can be mixed with blues to create some grays and uh, do some variety of things that way. And then this is Quinbert Scarlet, and I really like Quinbert Scarlet by itself, but with um, a mix of ultramarine, it can give you a really nice deep kind of uh, muted purple. It's really pretty. Um, I will make a black out of alizarin crimson, permanent alizarin crimson, and thalo blue. And this is Thalo Blue Green Shade. And those two colors together make a really nice uh, black. And I have Indigo and Sodalite Genuine on my palette, but those two 
aren't a true black. They are a kind of a blue, deep gray. They're not really uh, as dark as a black necessarily. And uh, so when I want a really uh, deep black, I will use the alizarin crimson and thalo blue for that. And uh, you can lean it uh, a little bluer or you can put more alizarin crimson in it and make it a little on the redder side of black. And so I like having that ability to adjust uh, the mix that way. Uh, I use Quin Rose a lot. And so I will mix my Quin Rose with uh, really any of these blues to get a variety of purples. And uh, I think they all are nice in their own way. Uh, Quin Rose is uh, really good to mix, as I said, with some of these yellows for oranges or a um, kind of a rusty red, that kind of thing, depending on if you're using uh, Quin Gold with the uh, Quin Rose. And then I have a variety of other reds. The Quin Magenta is the most probably neutral kind of purpley red. This is the most neutral, uh, it's sort of in the middle red. It is leaning toward the cooler reds, but the Elizabeth Crimson is more neutral than Quinn Rose. And uh, this is uh, Quinn Lilac, and I really like it. It's just a little more on the purple side compared to the Quinn Rose, um, and it's, it is a nice color. It just depends on what I'm what I'm doing at the moment, whether I use that. Um, and recently I've been using Quinn Coral for a painting I'm doing. Uh, and then I will talk about, uh, some of these oranges a little more in my next uh, video, but the transparent pearl orange is one that I really like and have used in a variety of ways. I've uh, used it in mixes to make a black, and then I've used it just by itself. Um, and you can, uh, put, put it with red to create a deeper red if you want. So there's a variety of things you can do there. Um, and then lastly, I have ultramarine turquoise that's on the palette that I will use every now and then. And it's a very, uh, kind of deep, uh, sea sort of looking turquoise. And I have a uh, burnt umber over here. So this is a little bit of a cooler brown compared to my rustier browns. And I, I mentioned the tiger's eye earlier. And then, uh, last couple would be, uh, Carbazole Violet, and it is a staining color, and it is a very intense pigment, but um, I like it as a purple by itself, and then I have mixed it with a tiny bit of this with my Quinn Gold to make sort of a creamy looking yellow, so it's mostly yellow with just a tiny touch of that. Because they are opposites on the palette, uh, they make a, a nice neutral blend. And then finally, um, I do have, well, I'll go back over here right quick. I have a variety of some reds over here. My Parole Scarlet is my warm red that I would use um, if I'm making a, a bright warm orange um, to mix with yellows. Or I can also mix this with ultramarine um, blue and get a muted purple because this is almost an orange and uh, those are kind of opposites on the color wheel. Then when you mix those two together, they make a nice muted purple. And uh, then I have back here, I have Carmine and Quinn Red. And Carmine is a almost, well, it's not really fire engine red, but it is a, a very vibrant red. And it uh, is good just by itself, but I will oftentimes use it mixed with um, one of my other reds because it will uh, strengthen them, give them a little more body to the pigment. Um, and whatever I'm making, it makes it uh, a stronger color. Quinn Red, I haven't used a lot. So this is one that I have on my palette. As you can see, it's kind of dry and moving around in there. So um, it is not one I necessarily want to take off right now, but uh, every now and then, um, I might use that. And then lastly is the uh, Alvaro's Fresco. And that is a color that I've recently added. And it is a purpley gray. And it is really nice for um, glazing on top of colors to sort of make them feel shadowed. 
it is a really nice gray in itself. And I just uh, have started using it in some mixes lately. So uh, the next video is going to go over some of the orange mixes down here. And I do have a video out talking about green mixes and one about grays. And eventually I will maybe do a uh, video on uh, some of the reds and things like that. So I hope this was uh, helpful to hear some of the mixes and hear about some of the colors that are on my palette. And as I mentioned, I will post the link for uh, the list of colors that are on my palette. And there are a lot of uh, sources. So for at least for the Daniel Smith pigments, you can go on their website at Daniel Smith. Uh, I think it might just be danielsmith.com, but uh, they show charts of what the colors look like. And so rather than pulling out lots of color in this video, I thought I would just go give a quick run through of some of the things I do with the paint on my palette. So I hope that was interesting and gave you some information on um, my palettes and some of the colors that I would use. I uh, will link, I believe I have my palette listed on my website in the colors that are in my palette right now. And uh, so I will put that link below this video so that you can uh, go and uh, look at that if you if you would like. And then just remember that uh, these are all colors that work for my style and the paintings that I like to do. So um, I would say that you can get some ideas from it, but don't feel like these are the um, perfect colors for every watercolor painting or necessarily for your style or your color sense. So uh, you can try it out and maybe uh, just start slow. And uh, if you can only buy a few or if you're wanting to limit yourself and really uh, work with a palette to figure out color mixes and all of that, then I would do something like this, where you uh, work with maybe seven colors for a while, try mixes, all kinds of mixes in between them, and then maybe add one or two pigments here and there and uh, try working uh, that into a smaller palette. And I will see you next time. And if you have a tip, trick, or technique that you would like to see with watercolor, please leave a comment below and I will add that to my video list. And I hope you have a good day. Bye.